All right, it's the Houston High School Huddle. We are talking week five of the uh, Texas high school football season. I got Matt Stitt from, with Dave, from Dave Campbell's Texas high school football. I'm the wizard. We have reached the halfway mark for some teams. I really hate saying that because that, mean, that means this thing's getting away from me. But it is the truth for some of these teams. It flies by, man. It flies it does. by. I can't believe it, it's our, we're already in week five. I mean, it's, it's crazy. But, hey, so we've got a long way to five. go. 12 weeks left. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for putting some uh, putting some perspective on it before I get all emotional and start crying. Some teams like North Shore, this is nowhere near the halfway mark. They they still got exactly. like eight more so games before they hit the. Yeah. Exactly. Well, speaking about uh, 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 week four, which is what we just came off of, let's let's get some thoughts on what uh, what we saw in week four. I would like to know right off the bat what you think about. Willis, did Willis get ourselves some respect? Are they are they punched up to a top five type team in the area, or what do you think about them after their impressive win against the Woodlands on the road? Really impressive performance from uh, Trent Miller's ball club. Uh, you know, if 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 you're looking at my rankings, I, I got him at number seven in Houston, okay. in my, and so in the Dave Campbell's AP state poll, they're the, they're the number seven Houston team. Okay. In the area, uh, which I think, so, you know, they're, they're kind of knocking on that door being ranked. I mean, obviously, you've got North Shore, Tascosita, Summer Creek. Uh, we've got Fulcher, Katy, and Ridge Point ahead of them. But, okay. I mean, I think they're right there in that mix with, with – I, I think there's a clear separation. I think North Shore, Summer Creek, and Tascosita top three pretty clearly. I think, you know, that, that, that Ridge Point, Fulcher, Katy, Willis – you could take those four and mix them up, and you, know, you could convince me in any order. I think they're all very similar teams. Uh, but great win for Willis. Uh, and, you know, the Woodlands, I don't think it's a bad loss for them. I think the Woodlands just proved – I mean, I think Willis just proved right that there's life There's life after DJ Lagway. You know, people yeah. were wondering, hey, you know, what are they going to be like after – you know, and the QB, Jack Emerson, was great. Uh, Jermaine Bishop is – he's got that dog in him. I mean, they're just – they're – they're still a danger, and I, I think the other thing is Willis is playing. They're they're not great on defense by any means, but right. they're playing better defensively than they did a year ago. And they're a team that can outscore you, and they, and they won that Woodlands they're game still, because the yeah. the clock ran out. <laughs> if the clock yeah, didn't run out, maybe the Woodlands would have come back and won that thing. They just it, it was going to be one of those games. I, I watched a lot of, uh, a good portion of that game Thursday night, and it was going to be. You could just tell after about the first quarter, was when the last team had the ball was going to win. So yeah. You look at some other teams that are rolling, and you talked a little bit about it earlier or two weeks ago when I introduced you to the coaches poll. You thought Pearland was a little low. Well, Pearland must have took it to heart because now they're playing your whole uh, – if they don't, other team don't score, they can't win uh, theory as they pitched three it's shutouts in a row. And they pitched three shutouts in a row, and I think they scored like over 50 in at least two of the games, maybe all three of them. Talk to me about how B.J. Gott got his team going. You know, I, I think part of it for Pearland is, you know, obviously early in the year, you know, you, you lose a close one to Fulcher. Uh, and at the time, we were all like, oh, man, what's wrong with Pearland? What's what's going on? And I don't think it was more – I think it was more about how good Fulcher is. I think I think I don't know yeah. if we realized in week one how good Fulcher is. Now, to play devil's advocate, you look at the three teams that Pearland beat and not exactly a uh, murderer's row. I mean, Houston, you know, Houston Memorial, you know, is probably the best of that bunch, but – they're a little down this year, so uh, you know, apparently is doing what they should do. They're taking care of business against against the bad teams, but you know, I think the next next four weeks, you know, really five weeks, you've got, you know, I think I think the Pasadena schools have have shown they can be competitive. You know, Memorial gave Dawson all they wanted last week. Doby typically uh, is always never an easy out, and you've got they still got to play Dawson, they still got to play Manville, they still got to play Shadow Creek, so. This is a tough stretch coming up for Pearland. They took care of business against the teams they took care of, and now it's going to be a matter of can can they get it done against the better teams in their district, which that, that stretch is, starts this week. Yeah, that's true. We're going to talk about some 22-6A matchups a little bit later on. But, uh, but one more thing is, is uh, to talk about from last week, and especially the 6A level, which over 19-6A, you know, Peyto took out a, a team, a Decaney team that we thought was pretty good, but maybe they aren't. A Tompkins team now, they took them out by a couple scores. I guess that's one of these deals. Is Peyto for real? Is it a contender for, for a playoff spot? Or is Tompkins just a lot worse off than we thought they were this year because they had to you know, kind of rebuild a little bit? 
I think both things can be true. <laughs> I think Pato is a is a play is a playoff contender. I think you've got some separation going on in nineteen six A. I think it's Katie and Jordan, top two teams. Yeah. Then I think you've got a, about four or five teams compete for those last two spots. And I think Pato and Tompkins are in that mix. I think Maid Creek. You know, Mike Mike Arongbolo, Coach Arrow has done a great job in his first year there at Maid Creek. They're off to a good start. Um, see if they can keep it up. <laughs> Tompkins is going to be in the mix. They played a really tough schedule non-district so you know the record may not be great but i think they're they're going to be battle tested cinco ranch chris dudley does a good job there so you've got a lot of teams you know that that, that are in the mix with that, that playoff spot so i think pato's a playoff contender i think tompkins probably isn't as strong as they have been but i wouldn't count tompkins out as far as being a playoff topic they've done a really good job with that program wouldn't count them completely out of the playoff mix especially in kdisd where you know that a lot of balance anything can happen on any, any given thursday friday or you know saturday in some cases and then looking at some lower lower classification games or, or lower than 6A, because I, I know the 5A team say, hey, we ain't lower. We're just not 6A. It's not as <laughs> Brand- big. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, not as big. Uh, Randall put a hurting on Marshall, and they, they, they threw Keelan Sweeney in there at quarterback instead of uh, Scrabonic. And uh, and uh, talking to Coach Randall, he thought that was a <clears throat> that was a key part in the game because Marshall had game plan <clears throat> for the other one, and he's more of a running mm-hmm. quarterback, and it kind of – Threw him for a loop, and then if you look down in four A, two big overtime wins for for Bay City and El Campo, and, and their their games with well, actually I guess El Campo went two overtimes, and their games with Needville and then Sealy. So, what do you think about those three teams' performances? Uh, Randall was one of the most impressive performances across the state. Any classification, any area, really really impressive performance to beat Fort Ben Marshall forty five to seven. Very impressive. I thought Randall will win the game. Didn't think they would dominate Fort Ben Marshall like they did. Uh, and Randall's got to turn back right back around. They got another tough one this week. I'm sure we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but absolutely. yeah, Randall, uh, you know, Sweeney plays receiver for Randall, but he was quarterback last year at Needville. And I think Needville went 10 and 3. So it's not like he's not experienced in playing in big, high leverage games. Then you've got Landon at running back. He's got a great defense there at Randall, and they, they showed out and did a great job. Uh, Bay City and El Campo going to overtime. You know, Needville and Sealy are good teams. Uh, and Sealy in Division Two, Needville in Division One, good football teams. Those are just good close games between two teams that are playoff teams at the 4A level. So uh, nice win. You know, Bay City's kind of got back on track after their their loss to Edna. Uh, El Campo has been really good this year. I think their one loss is a really close game to Brian Rudder. Up there in yeah. Bryan College Station, and Rudder is, I think, four and zero right now. So, and it was a close loss, I think, by four points. So, uh, El Campo and and Bay City, I think, are still in the mix there in Region Four in Four A Division One. I. I thought Bay City was the favorite going into the season. Not so sure anymore. I think Austin LBJ is, is probably right now the team to beat in Region Four, but I think Bay City and El Campo are both going to be in the mix. All right, well, let's run through some games in week five. We'll, we'll go ahead and start the 6A level, 13-6A, and uh, talk a little bit about College Park and Grand Oaks. This has the makings of a, of a possible game that, that that could play for that fourth playoff spot, especially Grand Oaks, who you've been talking about for a while here, and they, they've gotten off to a good start, and, and they're taking on a College Park team that, that took one on the chin a couple weeks ago to, uh, uh, to Conroe to start off, but then they came back and put 54 up on – on Oak Ridge, this game could be for that fourth spot. I think I think this is a playoff game. I think the winner of this game gets fourth. Loser is in big trouble, and the loser is going to have to win one or two games they weren't favored to win in order to kind of overtake. Because not only do you have to get a win you shouldn't, but you may need two wins because even if you win one you shouldn't win, the other team in this game is going to have head-to-head on you. So right. it's a massive, massive game. Um, total toss up. I, I don't have a good read on, on you know on who I think is the favorite. I, I think it's just really a, a, a pick 'em type football game. If I had to pick, I would you know I I do have to pick because I'm on the podcast. Right. I give a slight lean, just very slight to College Park. I think they might be a little bit better in the trenches than Grand Oaks. Um, I think Grand Oaks is going to have some edges. I think Grand Oaks is probably across the board. Their skill players are going to be going to be better. Uh, I think Grand Oaks may have a better quarterback, but I think across the board, I think College Park in the trenches is a little bit better. So I'll go with College Park in a really close, entertaining, hard-fought football game. This, this is this is a, I, I think, <clears throat> I think this is for fourth place. I think this is a massive, massive football game 
it's weird to say that on September, in September, but yeah, it happens. It, so I think pressure field. I think yeah. the district is kind of, you know, I think you got the Woodlands and, and the Willis <clears throat> at the top. I think Conroe looks to be a, you know, Conroe's already beaten College Park, so they already have a head right. point on College Park. I think Conroe's probably your three. I think the winner of this game gets fourth. So huge, huge game with implications in 13 six A. That would be huge. That'd be a huge win for Grand Oaks because they haven't really been in the playoff picture for they, a couple, two, several yeah, years. They've, and, they've never made the playoff. I mean, their school hasn't been around that long, but they've yeah. never made the. They, they had one year. I think they, maybe their, their their second year open, they went seven and three and missed the playoffs on a tiebreaker. So they've never actually been in the playoffs. This would be a huge win for Sean McDowell in his program. But you know, Kyle Coates. These both both these guys are in year two. You know, Kyle Coates at College Park coming over from Desoto. Uh, where yeah. he was defensive coordinator. Both these guys are in year two and doing doing good jobs with their programs. Excellent. Well, we jumped down to 15, uh, 6A, and we talked about how we needed Klein Collins to show us something. They took down Magnolia West for their first win, and they, they put some style points on them by beating them by, you know, I think it was, what, 34-7, to 7, so that's mm-hmm. however many, 27 points. It's four touchdowns. They got Klein now. They need to kind of build win after win, but Klein's – Klein hasn't played bad football this year, so this maybe maybe this would be a little bit tougher than than Magnolia West, or maybe right around the same thing. But what do you think is going to happen in this one? This district's weird because you've got <clears throat> I think Magnolia is in first place right now at two and zero, and Tomball is one and zero. We thought the Klein schools would run the district. Well, yeah. Klein Oak had different ideas with Klein Kane, Klein Kane last week, and you know winning a great game. Collins has had some struggles. Klein is in the mix, but. You know, they did drop their district opener to Klein Kane. So, I think it's a massive game. I think with the way the district is going where everybody's kind of beating anybody on any given night, every win is going to be crucial. I wonder if Collins, and I don't know this for a fact, that either they either figured some things out or got some guys healthy. It looked like a different ball club last week. So, Klein's solid, uh, but I don't take t- – I think I think Forrest is probably the, the at the bottom rung of the district. So, Right. Klein did what they should do and beat Forrest pretty bad. Let's see what they do against Collins. You know, Collins, I think, still has their back against the wall. So, I I, I like Collins in this one. I think this is this is going to be a very competitive game. Those Klein versus Klein games are, are really good. And so, if you're looking for a good game to watch Saturday, I think it's Saturday night. Uh, so, I won't make the show, but it's going to be a good game to right. watch uh, Saturday night. I'm, I may pop this online and watch it uh, Saturday night while, uh, while I'm at my game. Give it a look see. Give it a little look see. Yeah, yeah. But I like Collins. I think Collins gets some in here. Well, another one in 15 6 is two teams that are now kind of scrambling a little bit because I think they both probably thought they were going to, especially Memorial at home and then Klein Kane, they were just kind of coasting, killing teams. And you just talked about they lost to Klein Oak by a point. Tomball Memorial was up on <clears throat> Magnolia and let them come back and beat them. So now they're sitting there with one losses on their schedule and they're playing each other. Don't want to get a second loss in district because you don't know how this thing's going to play out. How, how do you feel about this one? Yeah, I think Tomball Memorial is in trouble in this game. I think Klein Kane is going to be in a very foul mood Thursday mm-hmm. night. It's a Thursday game. Yeah, <clears throat> they're at Klein Memorial Stadium, so uh, I like Klein Kane. I, I think they they were up on Oak most of the game. I think they kind of felt like they let that game slip out, slip away a little bit. And Tomba Memorial and Magnolia was a little more of a back and forth game. Tomba Memorial, I don't know if you saw, they had a crazy touchdown in that game where Magnolia tried yeah, to that, play. Yeah, did on. you see that? Did you, you yeah, saw it, right? Yeah, the and the, the guy se- from the se- Memorial just <laughs> intercepted the lateral and ran it the other direction. Well, the second guy, open. the second guy who was th- the guy who was throwing the second lateral just kind of just chucked it. He was just like, I don't know, yeah. this is what I'm supposed to do. He's playing hot potato. I don't know how. Yeah, he, exactly. Not a, it. it, it, it I wonder if the the Magnolia special teams coach got fired for that because I'm sure his head coach was not happy with those shenanigans. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I think Kane. I like Kane. I think Kane is the most complete team in the district, and I know they let they won't let one slip away against Oak. But I think if you're Kane, you're like we run the table. We can still right. win the district because Oak is probably going to drop another one at some point. The district is just too balanced. Yeah, I think Kane's got to step up on everyone. So this is. This is going to be a, a big win to get right. And then if you're Tomball Memorial, if you lose this game, you're 0-2, and you're really up against it now. Now your yeah. your margin for error is pretty much eliminated, and you still got a lot of tough games left. But yeah. uh, I like Kane in this one. Exactly. Man, we got we got to take that play out the playbook. I just You brought it up, and it made me yeah. think Probably of it, too, because that, that, yeah. yeah. that second guy wasn't even looking who he was tossing it to. He just wanted that thing out of his on, hands. 
I saw it today on our show on, on the highlights, and yeah, it was not. Yeah, it was like, and that was to start the game, too. That was hilarious. All right, yeah. let's go to 16, uh, uh, 16 6A, where there's not a lot of games. A lot of teams have buys, but the one that is playing is a, is a big one. It, two teams that are undefeated in district, undefeated overall, I believe Langham Creek still is. Uh, for Langham Creek, but yeah, Bridgeland did yeah. take that loss against Rich Point. Tell right. me about this one. Is this going to be? Uh, is this going to be one where Langham Creek kind of find, sees where they kind of stand in this thing? Because they're right now they're thinking playoffs, and if they can give yeah. Bridgeland a game, I, and I think they are a play. I mean, Langham Creek that, that win over Katie Pato in the season opener looks a lot better yeah, now. It does look now, a lot now, better. Uh, so I think Langham Creek is clearly improved, and I and I personally think. They're probably going to get into the playoffs. They may be the four seed, but I mean, I, I think they are a playoff team. If you beat Bridgeland, you're absolutely a playoff team, right? Uh, but you know, Bridgeland's had two weeks to kind of stew on, on their loss against Ridge Point, um, and I think I think they just have a superior team. I mean, Bridgeland, you know, I, I don't like the two quarterback system. They're 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 still going to go with it, I'm sure. Both, but they have two capable quarterbacks, a really deep, you know, really good offensive line, and I think if Bridgeland leans on that more with the running game, I think Bridgeland's right. hard to stop. I think Bridgeland gets themselves in trouble when they try to throw it a little bit too much. If they lean into being a, a, a physical, run-oriented ball club, I think they they have two really good running backs. The sophomore is a is a load. He, he is hard to bring down, breaks a lot of tackles. I think they're the better team. Langan Creek's going to throw a lot at them, uh, especially with two weeks to prepare. I'm sure Coach Thompson and his ball club have got a few tricks up their sleeve. But I think Bridgeland is just a better football team across the board. I think they just need to lean into that running game, and they should be fine in this one. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, moving on to 17, uh, 6A, and you, you, I keep wanting to say 5A for some reason. I don't know what my problem is today. 17, 6A, Cy Falls, Houston Memorial. Uh, obviously, Houston Memorial's got that 0-3 record. The main thing that sticks out to me with Memorial is, man, they just cannot score. They cannot produce any kind of offense whatsoever. Two touchdowns through three games is, is not going to do it. Will they find some footing once they finally get here in district play? I think we both said this last time. 17-6A, they got to find a way to beat against some uh, beat each other because they weren't doing anything in the non-district, really. Can this be a game where they can do something? Because Cy Falls is coming off that big 20-point win off of clear, over Clear Falls. Well, they got beat by 20. Guess, they got beat by 20. Right? Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now Falls has shown the ability to score true. some points, and they, you know, and I guess for them, you know, you look at that week two loss to Klein Oak, and it doesn't look so bad now. You know, at least Klein Oak by three, and Klein Oak got a nice win over Kane, so it's all relative. Uh, I don't think Falls is really was real happy about going down to Clear Falls and getting you know beat by three touchdowns. Right. Uh, but I, I feel like Falls, their athleticism is going to give you know Memorial. I think their issue this year and, and has been an issue. They're not they're not good enough up front, and they don't have good enough quarterback play. To offset their lack of athleticism, they're just not a very dynamic and explosive football team, generally. And when they're good, they're usually it's because they're good up front. They've got you know some couple of big physical receivers and, and good quarterback play, and they just don't have a lot of that this year. So I think Falls is going to just be a little bit too much for them. They're going to break a few big plays, and in, in, especially in the running game. And I, the Falls defense has been solid, other than last week. You know, two weeks ago against Clear Falls, they kind of got. Um, gashed a little bit, but I just don't think Memorial is going to bring enough to the table to, to handle them. I think Memorial will be in that mix for that fourth playoff spot, um, you know, along with Jersey Village. I think, I think honestly, it's probably going to come down to JV and Memorial for that last playoff spot. Uh, but I think Falls is kind of solidly in that, that three-hole behind Cy Fair yeah. and uh, Stratford. This isn't one of those games they're going to pick up a win to, to get them into that fourth I playoff so. spot. I, I like Falls That's- in this one. Especially if they fall behind, because that does not look like a team that can come from behind at all. Yeah. Moving to, uh, we, we touched on this a little bit. This could be an interesting game. I don't know if I had it as an interesting game at the beginning of the year, but Peyto against Maid Creek now looks like it could be something special and, and possibly have playoff implications. Oh, I think this game has playoff implications for sure. You know, Peyto's 2-1, and one, Maid Creek at 3-1, and one. Uh, Peyto's 1-0 and oh in district, uh, Maid Creek 1-1. I mentioned it, very impressed with Coach Arambolo there at May Creek in their, in their start. And you look at May Creek and their district loss was to Jordan last week. But they were competitive with Jordan. Jordan right. was 24-7. Now, May Creek's offense left a lot to be desired, but to hold a really good offense in Jordan to 24 points uh, says a lot. I and mean, this is going to be a very physical, defensive-oriented game. The running back for Pato had a huge game last week. 
Uh, I believe he ran for 313 yards. I know he's up for uh, statewide player of the week this week. He had a monster night uh, for Pato in the win. I'm trying to find his name now just to make sure I get it right. Um, it is um, Terrence Johnson. He had 315 yards and three touchdowns Ooh. last week for Pato. So, Good huge Lord. game for him. I think he's the difference. May Creek, uh, solid defensively, still trying to find themselves on offense. So, I think Pato gets a big win, goes 2-0 and in district, and now all of a sudden they can talk about challenging for a district title. May Creek, I think, is still going to be in that playoff mix, but now at 1-2 and two, they're starting to lose that margin for error. You know, this is – this is kind of a swing game for both of these teams. You know, if you're if you're looking at Katie ISD and your team is not Katie or Jordan, right? You're like, okay, we can afford to lose to Katie and Jordan because we know they're probably going to finish one two. It's the games kind of here in this middle that really are going to tell the tale. You know, Pato and May Creek. This is you know this is the classic buffer win situation. Both these teams are going to be the playoff mix. A win, a win will give you a little bit of a leg up when it comes to tiebreakers and those kind of things if it comes down to it later on. Yeah, that's the same for this next one with the, the Katie Taylor and Cinco Ranch because you saw what Taylor did last year. They they, they snuck a win against a team they didn't think they were going to beat. It was, it was, was it Tompkins it was that they beat? It was no, Cinco. It was Cinco. They, they, beat they beat Cinco, Cinco last year. like 13 10 to 11. Se- or, yeah, yeah it was a real weird, small score. Yeah, uh-huh. And that I'm put them in. Yeah. That that pushed them into the postseason. And it very well could happen again. I mean, they're playing again now. And this this could almost eliminate one of the teams because I don't think they're going to – neither one of these teams don't look like a team that can beat a Katie or a Jordan and maybe even struggle against these other two that we just talked about. Talk about this game and, and, and what you feel about it. Yeah, Taylor was on the wrong end of, of a weird low-scoring game a couple of weeks ago when they lost to May Creek 7-0. Right. So they, they were kind wild. of on the, the wrong end of this. I like Cinco. I think Cinco's a little too explosive. You know, they got drilled by Katie, but, you know, that's kind of a yearly thing. They, 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 you know, Katie's, Katie owns Cinco, you know. Cinco beat them one time, like in the early 2000s, I think, and ever since then, Katie's just been blasting those Beating guys. Them. I've gone to a couple of Katie Cinco games, and they weren't – Weren't very competitive. Uh, so, I think Cinco, they got a nice win over Seven Lakes to open district. They've got, you know, Chris Dudley and his ball club are pretty pretty explosive offensively. Taylor's not very explosive offensively. They play, they play good defense, but in this in this matchup, uh, I like Cinco. I think Cinco's got a little too much firepower for Taylor in this one. I got you. You know, there's some districts here in 6A that, I mean, you've already seen me blow past 14-6A and 18-6A. And I pretty much could do it with 26A because you got one team, and then what else am I doing in this district? Talk to me about the rest of, of 26A besides Folsher. I mean, I, they used to have – there's players to watch for. Like Hastings has Smith Aragbo, but I just saw he's out for the year. Mm-hmm. He hurt his leg, and he's done. And he's got a, a guy that's got the quickest first step in the game. And they, they tell me uh, if you hurt your leg or tear ligaments in your knee or whatever it was, then that's going to stop that step real quick. And uh, you ought to know about steps, right, Step? Yeah, but anyways, yeah, talking, no, maybe, you're the, maybe you have the quickest step in the, in the business. I don't know. Hardly, but talk to me <laughs> Talk to me about is there is there any team I need to keep an eye on here in 26A? Because, you know, they're playing 19-6A. Is it a, is it a deal where uh, Fulcher will win and the other ones are just, you know, just hoping to get that 11th game and then be done with it? Who should I look out for in this dish? They won't admit it, but that's what I'm thinking. I mean, just looking at it, you know, prove me wrong. But, you know, I I think second is going to come down to a straight Jesuit, George Rand. Straight Jesuit's been pretty solid early in the year. They went up to Dallas, went to the Metroplex, played Euless Trinity competitively. They're two and two on the year. I I think they've been solid. I think George Ranch is probably, you know, right there with them as, you know, fighting for second place and maybe the chance to host a first round playoff game. Drops off pretty quick after that uh, with the A-Leaf schools. You know, they're all, they're all kind of struggling right now. No one's really uh, off to a good start. I mean, I, I think if I had to guess, I would go with Taylor as the four seed in this district. Right. But I, I don't – I mean, I could see Elsick getting hot. I could see Hastings. It's – I think it's one of those A-Leaf – you know, Richmond Foster's way down this year. They're struggling. Yeah. So, I wouldn't – I don't think they're in the – I think it's going to come down to either Hastings, Elsick, or, or – Last spot. So there's a good chance when district play starts, I won't have a camera out to see Fulcher anymore because it's uh, it'll be just like unless they're bad. playing on Thursday and you just got to have a camera. Yeah, you just have to have a camera. Yeah, I got you. 
I got you. All right, well, let's talk about another district that's similar. It's that. usually they got they got High Tower and Ridge Point, and in the past it's been High Tower and Ridge Point, and then a, a, a distant third has always been Travis, and then we'll see who gets in as four. Well, I don't think Travis has it. From what they're showing us, I don't think that's a playoff team at all. Maybe these two teams start. here. Elkins against uh, uh, Austin. This could be a playoff preview. Maybe one one or two of these teams could both make it into the show. Yeah, I thought Austin was kind of the the the, the smart pick for the three seed, and and you know they're off to a two and two start. You know they, you know they're probably you know two points away from being three and one. They lost to Maid yeah. Creek by two points. Yeah. So I think I think Austin is probably the favorite for that three spot. Uh, Elkins is going to be in that mix. I think Austin's got a leg up on Elkins personally. Uh, just, just looking at kind of how things go. I mean, and I know Elkins open district with Ridge Point, which is really tough. I think this is going to be a really close game. I think the fourth place spot is going to come down to you know Elkins, you know, and, and probably Bush or Travis. I mean, I know Travis is zero and four, but I feel like they're they're on the kind of the downside of their schedule. They'll start to pick things up a little bit. Bush is obviously playing with a lot of emotion and, and some heavy hearts right now. Right. Uh, they'll be you know you never know. It, you know, with Bush, you know, because of what happened with Coach Aldridge and that tragic, uh, right. his tra- you know, losing him, you know, way too early, Bush could either go, you know, just rally and, and play great or they could they could tank. And so far, it looks like they're rallying and playing good football. So uh, I would think Bush and Elkins are kind of the two teams that are really going to be in that mix of that four spot. But I think Austin is, is to me, right now, as on you know, September 23rd, the team to beat for that three seed. Excellent. Well, we'll see what happens unless the Thursday night game as well. So we'll be at that one. There you go. Uh, I was just down at Fort Bend on Saturday at Hall Stadium. That's right. That's right. That we'll be we'll be right there. My guy, one one guy lives right next to Hall, so he wants all of them joints, all the Hall Stadium. <laughs> just give them all to me. I said, yeah. well, I'm not going to give you Crawford against Kempner or whoever that could play, but I'll give you this one. All right, talk to me about 22-6A. We talked about the guys that we thought were going to be the four playoff teams all playing each other. Let's talk a little bit more about the Shadow Creek, Perlin, Dawson. As Shadow Creek has kind of righted the ship here uh, after their embarrassing loss in game one. But yeah, now everybody's getting have. shit out by them. But they've righted the ship here. Yeah. Talk to them about how they're going to do against Pearland Dawson. Uh, you know, Shadow Creek, uh, you know, that, that matchup with Manville last week, that score I don't think indicates how dominant Shadow Creek Yeah, was. they were up 42 nothing. Yeah, it, it was, they were up huge. I mean, it, the final score is 43-20. Probably doesn't, it, it probably is very generous to Manville. Uh, I thought JoJo Stewart looked as good as he's looked in a, in a Shadow Creek uniform. He looked comfortable. He looked in sync, and he you know he threw four touchdown passes, two to Corey Watson, two to Chris Stewart, and the Shadow Creek defense was on point. So they, I thought they had a great game. May have been, in my opinion, their best game of the year so far. Obviously, a lot of emotion going against Manville. Those kids all know each other. They grew up together. So uh, impressive, impressive performance in Shadow Creek. Pearland Dawson offensively looked great last week. They're scoring, yeah. Jeremiah Treadway had five touchdowns. He was awesome. They moved the ball up and down the field against Pasadena Memorial. The problem is Pasadena Memorial also moved the ball up and down the field on them. You know, they, yeah. it was 48-45, and it was, you know, Pearland Dawson needed every bit of that offense last week because Pasadena Memorial really pushed him. Very surprised by that. Um that's a little concerning going into this one. I think Shadow Creek's playing really good football right now, um, starting to kind of to creep back into the state ranking discussion. They kind of once they got beat by Summer Creek, they kind of got buried a little bit. Well, Summer Creek's burying everyone, and Shadow Creek's been on a nice winning streak. So um, I like Shadow Creek in this one. Those two schools aren't very far from each other. I think mean, Shadow Creek is Alvin ISD, but it's in the Paraland city limits. I think it's right there, right, right there off two eighty eight. Uh, just south of the yep. Beltway there, so I was over in that neck of the woods last week. So yeah, it's it's those these kids probably all know each other too. There's probably a lot of kids that know each other uh, in this matchup. So uh, I'm gonna go with Shadow Creek. I just think they're playing enough good football right now, and I've got some concerns about Paraland Dawson's defense. Yeah, and you, when you go up against superstar athletes like Shadow Creek, you need to have your defense going on point. Uh, we're pretty excited. Twenty three six A is about ready to get started, and. Which means they'll be on just about every week through the rest of the season, some game. And we're going to start with C.E. King and Atascacita. Um, C.E. King, man, they could be a uh, district contender in some of these districts as far as the title yeah. goes. Not in this one, 
But in some they're of them. They're fighting for a playoff spot. They're fighting for a playoff spot in this one. But in, in the one we just talked about, 20, maybe, no, maybe not 21, they can at least fight for a two spot. Talk about the you know the quick, fast. They have a quick, fast Deion Sims, but Atascacita's got like three or four guys that are just as fast as he is on the other side of the ball as well. Atascacita's got a lot of quick, quick and fast guys. And so uh, if this game was played last week, I would be a little bit concerned if I was a Tascacita. You know, coming off the big win in Austin against Westlake, emotional win, traveling back to Houston, you're feeling good, everybody's patting you on the back, telling you how awesome you are. I'd be a little bit concerned. But they've had a week off. Coach Stump has kind of got, you know, I'm sure in the bye week, Coach Stump told them, hey, we're not as good as we think we are. We got a lot of work to do. Let's clean this up, clean that up, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I like a Tascacita. I think they'll be on point, ready to go in district play. And C.E. King should have their attention because C.E. King's a dangerous, dangerous team. Yeah. Uh, I think I think C.E. King, it will be a big upset to beat Atascacita, but they, Atascacita can't. If they look past them, C.E. King's going to put them in a dogfight. So right. that's kind of my read on this one. I like Atascacita, uh, but I do think C.E. King, if Atascacita is, is lackadaisical, puts the ball on the ground, that kind of thing. Right. I think C.E. King could uh, easily do this. Is that, is that a Thursday or Saturday game, or what, what day is that? That is a Friday. It's a, it's a, uh, that's a Thursday game, yeah. It's a Thursday game okay. at Turner. It's, it's a nice Thursday night matchup nice there. Nice little, beautiful, little uh, tasty game. Beautiful Turner Stadium, yeah. You know, can, let's, oh, Umble, get, Umble has some good non-Friday games because they have yeah, they they to play a lot of, you know, even, even teams like Kingwood and Umble are good football teams. You know, so you got a lot of good teams that share that stadium. So you know, you'll get a good Thursday. You're going to see something good. I'll be seeing 23-6A a lot. All right, let's move down to 5A. Uh, Barber Seals uh, taking on Luf- Lufkin. They finally were finally in district play here at 9-5A Division One. Mm-hmm. Barber Seals spent their whole non-district playing uh, 6A teams to get ready for this district, and they've done quite well actually. They went three and one. They did lose by two to Deer Park, who. I mean, we didn't mention that game last, but Deer Park played a heck of a game to start their district playoff with winning, winning their game. Talk to me about uh, this one, and, and do you think they can – that's a heck of a travel over there to Lufkin. Can they take care of business up there? So it's a couple of things. About, so Barbers Hill is 3-1. and one. Now, a couple of those 6A wins are probably against two of the lower – Yeah. New Caney. New Caney is really, really struggling. And last week, you know, Foster, we, t- we just talked about Foster, how much they've struggled. So, uh, you know. Don't apologize for wins, but you no. just make a note. You know, it's like right. mm, let's. I think we're we're gonna get a good. I, I think this game. These are. I think both of these teams are playoff teams. I think it's a matter of seeding at this point. You know, especially when it comes to like Barbers Hill, if they can get a win over Lufkin, really increases their chances of hosting a first round playoff game. The problem for Barbers Hill is is they have to go to Lufkin. And right. There's not a. I, I'm not a big home field advantage guy in Texas high school football. There's not a lot of true home field advantages in the state. Uh, if travel's involved, though, it makes it a home field advantage. So, because teams generally, when they travel, yeah. it, it does impact performance, especially if they travel, you know, over an hour and a half, which Barbers Hill is going to have to do. So Lufkin at home is going to have a big edge because they're they, they're people they're playing a lot of teams that are not used to traveling. Lufkin travel for Lufkin is just part of it. They're used to it because they're right. on an island. You know, driving two hours for them is no big deal. Or for Barbers Hill, it is a big deal. So, and then you throw in Lufkin, Abe Martin Stadium is a very tough place to play. Then you add in Lufkin has maybe one of the best defensive lines in the state with yeah. the LSU commit Zion Williams right in the middle of it. And they got another D1 guy, 300 pounds right next to him. Lufkin is a load. Yeah. They Offensively, are. they're a little bit inconsistent, but I think they they got their quarterback back a couple weeks ago. They're starting to play better. I like Lufkin at home in this one. I think Lufkin gets yeah, there. It does seem. I, I would like to see him stay within two two touchdowns of him just to show that, hey, they, they can, like you said, they could possibly get a home field playoff game if they can show that they can play with the Lufkin and then pull off some wins some other places. Uh, following up in district, that district. You know, that's, that's it is. a good district. You know, you got you got Galveston Ball and Port Arthur Memorial. Good good district. Yeah, Absolutely. Baytown Lee, as you feel like their three and one district, their three and one record is kind of uh, juiced up by playing some uh, some suspect squads there with Galena Park and Chavez and whatnot. But I mainly threw this one on here because this is time for Galveston Ball to start playing some uh, district games with Jonah Williams that they haven't had the luxury of doing in the past realignment where they're just you know he's just jogging around, he's not even at full mm-hmm. speed half the time. 
This is yeah. his chance to get started here. We're playing Sterling. Maybe it, it's better than everybody they played last year, but maybe not the best in this district. I think it's a great way to put it. I think if you put Baytown Sterling in Galveston Balls District last year, this is the district championship game. Right. Uh, this now, I think this is just, you know, Galveston Ball. It's one of those games where now if you're Galveston Ball, you got to take care of business. You can't afford to lose to a Baytown Sterling. And I don't think they will. I think I think your Galveston Ball has played a pretty good non-district slate. I, I like, you know, they got you know, they opened the year that nice win o- over Manville. Uh, to kind of get get things kicked off, and yeah, Manville struggled a little bit, but Ball Ball took care of business. Jonah Williams had a huge game. Texas City, Friendswood, West Side. I mean, those are you know West Side's is, you know a solid you know they're solid HISD six A, but the thing is, Galveston Ball has been dominant against that better competition. They beat Friendswood thirty thirty seven. Friendswood's not a bad football team, and Galveston Ball handled them with ease. So yeah, absolutely, I expect more of the same. I, I don't expect Jonah Williams to play the entire game. I think he'll be out of here, you know, third quarter. I think Galveston Ball runs away with it. Runs away with it. All right, let's move down to District Kipner. We've been talking about because they're undefeated, and now they're finally going to be tested here uh, going into Humble to play Kingwood Park. Maybe that's why the uh, a test sees on Thursday because this one's on Friday. Or maybe it's mm-hmm. even Saturday. I'm not quite sure what it's time Friday. it is. It's, it's Friday, Friday night, yeah. Talk to me about this one. Is it uh, you know is it time for Kipner to find out who they really are, or, or what's going to happen in this one? This is the game I think that's going to tell us the tale about Kipner. Are, are they really a, a true playoff contender, or are they a team that benefited from really smart scheduling? Because uh, Kingwood Park is one and two, but they've played you know better competition, playing Clear Lake, losing to Montgomery by two, and they beat Dayton by three touchdowns. So. Uh, you know, I think KP is, is going to get the win here. Uh, but if you're Kempner, I think what you're hoping is even if you can't pull, come away with the win, if you can put together a competitive performance, I think that can go a long way into maybe saying, hey, you know, maybe maybe we're not going to win the district. And, you know, Laporte and Angleton are kind of the two best teams. But I think after that, it gets real muddy. And so, you know, I think Kempner, they can be competitive. This could give them some confidence going in to say, hey, we can maybe challenge – to get that fourth playoff spot in this in this district, because you know you look at it, there's winnable games uh, on the schedule with you know Pasadena and you know Porter struggling this year, Crosby struggled a little bit, so there's some games that I think Kempner can possibly win and uh, maybe uh, sneak into that postseason. Yeah, it's kind of pushing you into some 11-5A D1 talk just because of the fact there's so many questions going into it. I mean, I start off the season thinking Laporte was the team to beat. And they struggled in the non-district. Well, maybe not the team to beat, but them in Angleton. Losing all their non-district games, I mean, granted, it's going to be a different animal when they get into district play. But still, it's, they, they may have some question marks that they need to answer quickly before this district gets away from them. Man, what are we looking at as far as, as four teams out of here? Because I think we're both in agreement Angleton's in. I think we would both agree that Laporte would probably be a team that turns things around makes it in. Who do you think the other two might be? Or maybe you don't yeah. agree with me on Laporte. I don't know. No, I'm trying Laporte's to. I'm for- scheduled. Right. No, they're scheduled. When you look at Laporte, they lost by three to Deer Park. You know, they lost to Port Nature's Groves right. relatively competitively on the road by 14. And he lost to Kingwood by seven. And Kingwood is one of the surprise stories in the Houston area this year. I mean, Kingwood very right. quietly is putting, you know, and I said they were kind of a real deep sleeper team. And they're showing it. Uh, so Laporte, I'm not super concerned about Laporte. Especially in this district, I think it's between them and Angleton. Uh, I would go Friendswood as the three right now. I think Friendswood would be the three. I think the four is a little more wide open. I think it could come down to it could come down to this week's game between Kingwood Park and Kempner. But I do. I also think that a team like you know, I I could see Crosby, you know, sneaking in there and Porter sneaking in and kind of being a, a, a contender as well. I, I think you're going to have a real battle for that fourth playoff spot. Yeah. Maybe things will show itself this week when we start district play there and find out what's going on. Uh, moving down to Division Two, Eight Five A, you got Dayton against Montgomery. Montgomery's come out the gates smoking with a three and zero record here, and they're taking on Dayton. Talk to me about uh, this one, and gee, yeah, not only is Montgomery winning, they're 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 putting up a lot of points. They're giving up some points, but they're putting up a lot of points. Tell me what you feel about this one is. Montgomery on the track to get a playoff spot, or is it just a non-district type thing? 
The real, you know, I, I think I think you're fighting for fourth if you're in this district because I think your your top three are pretty stratified there with right. with P and G, Lake Creek, and, and Huntsville. I mean, Huntsville got a great win last week on the road, or two weeks ago. They went on the road to Cedar Park. Cedar Park had just beat Vandergrift. That's yeah. Vandergrift that played for a six A state championship a couple of, a couple of years ago. Huntsville goes 20. on the road, <clears throat> goes on the road and beats uh, Vandergrift. So Huntsville is right there in the mix. Lake Creek started the season off with a loss, but we know with Tyvon Byers, they're going to be loaded, and then PNG is the defending state champ. So I would put my, I, I think this game is for fourth place. The winner okay. of this game is getting a playoff spot. Uh, I like Coach Prieto at Dayton, but it's his first year. You know, his son's a young but talented signal caller as well. Uh, so you know, going he's only he's I think he's a junior right now. So. He's got one more year. I think next year Dayton is going to be really a good football team and a, and a problem to deal with, but I think they're a year away. I like Montgomery. Well, you mentioned this one might be uh, part of a three-way deal to find out who's going to win this district. p and G's doing what they we thought they were going to do, and you, like you said, Lake Creek took that loss to Magnolia, giving up 59. Uh, we started worrying about, is this going to be the kind of Lake Creek team where they have to win every game 70 to 69 and stuff like that? What do you think about this matchup going? In? It's at PNG, so that right there puts a little uh, yeah, slight a advantage, slight advantage that way to begin with. Yeah, this game was really close in the playoffs last year. I feel like Lake Creek may have taken a step back from last year. I don't think they're quite as strong as they were last year for whatever reason. Uh, maybe the worker bees graduated, you know that kind of thing. I know the big names are still back, but this, just looking at Lake Creek and their results, uh, I haven't seen. And maybe, maybe I'm being jaded because they lost that opener to Magnolia. Uh, right. And I just don't know enough about St. Thomas to really say either way. Uh, they did blow out straight Jesuits, so that, that's impressive. You know, I think straight Jesuits a competent 6A football team in the UIL. Uh, but like PNG, it's in PNG, and PNG is just really so good up front. The, the, right. Where PNG is strong, Lake Creek is a little bit weaker. So I, I like PNG in this one. I, I think going to Port Natchez, that's a – that's a, that's a hornet's nest, Wizzy. It's, it's a tough place yeah. to play. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do it, but they had to. That's what the schedule makers say. There it is. God bless it. Game of the week. Tell me what's going to happen. A Thursday night thriller, they call them. Uh, you won't even be watching your Cowboys and Giants because you'll be all in on this Randall-Iowa Colony the game. Chips in. Yeah. Put them all in. Oh. Tell me what's going to happen in this joint because uh, I don't this is the title. I don't want to watch Ezekiel I don't want to watch Zeke <laughs> Elliott run for one yard and fall down. I don't want to do You don't that. want that? He's trying his no. darndest. He, he's got to eat, right? God bless him, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Tell me about this game. I, I mean, you're, just, you're just waiting for that, weren't you? You're just waiting for that, <laughs> I, was, you? I was waiting, man. I got to eat. I hope, I, hope, I hope he scores four touchdowns against Washington. <laughs> How dare you? This podcast is off the rails. Get back to this Randall Colony game and don't talk about my commanders. I think this is the game of the week in the state. Like we, we, so oh, in te- the state? So, All right. Uh, yeah, so like, you know, I just got – so I, for those of you who don't know, pull the curtain back. On Mondays, uh, before I join my good friend Ward Fasold uh, and talk Houston football, I talk statewide football with Greg Tepper, my boss at Dave Campbell's. We do our podcast, uh, Tepp and Step, uh, Monday nights, and then we – for our subscribers, you can listen to it right away. And then our, if, you're, if you want to be a freeloader, which is fine, you can listen to it Fridays at noon for free. I made it to send you. I made it to, you're a subscriber, Wizzy, so you know, you're yeah, good. Yeah, I, I see. I pay. So we, so we, uh, we usually uh, talk about the entire state. We have a draft. We kind of do like a fantasy football draft every week where we pick our games. This was my right. number one pick right here. This, this was my number one is. game in Texas. Uh, two 4-0 teams. Two teams, I think, who can compete for a regional title. In 5A Division Two, Region Three, uh, and you and Iowa Colony is is a team that's moving up. From, you know, both these teams are th- year three of varsity football, and both teams went to the third round of the playoffs last year. A lot of similarities between these two programs. Yes, the difference sir. is, I think Randall is a little bit more built to play 5A football. They've been in 5A. They're, they're just a little bit better, I think, in the trenches and on the defensive side of the football. Iowa Colony's got the skill kids. They got a great young quarterback. They've got a bevy of talented receivers. They can, they, they can they can play in space. They can throw it around. They've got DBs for days. Randall's solid at those positions, but where Randall I think has a big edge is in the trenches, in their linebackers, in the running game. That's the biggest edge in this game to me. I don't think Randall blows Iowa Colony. I don't think it's a closer football game, but I think Randall because of their front play 
and the linebackers is the difference here. That's the difference maker. I'm interested now to see who came up second for game of the week in the state. I would think it was Panther Creek and Solana, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, I think that was Tepper's number one pick. Was, that was I had first one? pick. I, I had the number one. I had the number one pick overall. I took Randall Alba Colony. He had the number two pick. His first pick was uh, Solana and Panther Creek. Well, this one's definitely going to be the game of the week in Houston, and I'll agree with you on the state as well. Here's a here's another one that's probably for the district title, right? Yates against Worthing. Uh, Worthing got their first district title last uh, last year, uh, it's since 2013, and they're right back there doing their thing again. Talk about me. This game's going to be at Butler. Uh, I don't know. You're you're a Houston ISD there's, guy. Maybe you know there's an there's advantage no there. Telling what, <laughs> well, no, it's not, they're both on the south side, so it, it's really more about you know. I don't know what day. I think this is a, fr- a Friday. Friday night game. game. Yeah, it's a Friday game. But with the schedules in you know, HISD getting kind of all wonky with uh, with Del Mar and, and Dyer. Uh, needing some repairs. It's kind of there's been games that have been moved late that I didn't know or yeah. Saturday and Thursday that kind of thing. But I I think for this game I I think this is for the district. I think these are the two best teams in the district. All, all due respect to Fur, I think Yates and Worthing are the two best teams. And Yates Yates is two points away from being undefeated as well. Yeah. Worthing is off to a really good start. Um, I think what what you look at with Worthing is how that their two non district games this year they, they they went outside of HISD and got impressive wins. I think Worthing's going to go ten and zero. Yeah, I think they're going to okay. run the table, go ten and zero. And I'll say this: I think Uh-oh. Worthing fourth place team from the other district. I think HISD Dude, gets a team. Here we go into the second round in four A Division One. I. I think this is the year. And I don't think Yates is that far off. I think it's going to be a really good game. Uh, Worthing handled Yates pretty easily last year. I think Raphael Thomas is one of the most underrated coaches in Texas. If you're at, if you're a Houston Yates fan, you want to hang on to Coach Thomas as long as you can because I guarantee you, after this year, a lot of schools knocking on that guy's door to come take him, take him out, out of there and get get him get him out of Houston because he, he that dude can coach. And so Houston oh. ISD is going to have to hang on to him. That dude is a is a ball coaching jack. Um, wow. I like he's a ball coaching jack at Jack Yates. Uh, <laughs> I like Worthing. Uh, but I think this to be a very. This is a traditional rivalry on the south side of Houston. You know, it's not like Yates and, War- and Wheatley, where it's you know third ward, fifth ward. These are, both these schools are not too far from each other, right there in South Houston. So, I like Worthing. I like the Colts. I think Brandon Ellis's ball club runs the table and goes ten and zero in twenty twenty four. But it'll be a competitive game. Ten and zero, and I don't know Jack. So there's a lot of Jacks going on around here. All go. right, it wouldn't be a podcast if we didn't talk about some sort of. Mammoth match, non-district matchup for both Belleville and Columbus, and they're both playing each other this time. It might be a good time to do some collaboration here because Belleville lost to Hitchcock by seven. If Columbus beats them by whatever, two or three touchdowns, then all of a sudden we know what's going to happen in the Columbus-Hitchcock game if we want to play that type game with the scores. That's the Matt Diggs game, right? That's what Diggs likes to play. That's what he does. It doesn't always work out like that. It doesn't work like that. But man, is Columbus um, playing some football, man? There, that's I, so I'll just say too this, fun though, to watch. Talking about Columbus it, from a statewide perspective in three A Division right. One, Columbus has been number two in the state since the preseason, and the, the defending state champion Malakoff. And so, for those of you in Houston don't know where Malakoff is, Malakoff is kind of in East Texas. Yeah, East kind of Texas. Between, it's it's between Tyler and Dallas. It's kind of it's East it's East Texas. It's on the western yeah, it's edge of East, East Texas, Texas, though. Yeah, Henderson okay. County. Uh, well, Malakoff and, and Columbus, Malakoff was one, Columbus was two. And even after Columbus, the first three weeks of the year, had dominated, we still kept Malakoff one. The defending state champs, they had a 19-game winning streak, et cetera. Well, they have a common opponent now because in week three, Malakoff played Madisonville. Okay. And, you know, Madisonville, where Bucky's is on I-45. Uh, and Malakoff beat them by one point, 29-28. Now, Madisonville is a class 4A team. In a good class four A team, Malakoff beat him by a point. They went, they scored at the end of the game, went for two, beat him twenty nine twenty eight. Columbus plays Mad- Madisonville last week and beats him. I want to say sixty three to thirty four. Yeah, they beat Columbus the pants put off up them. sixty. They they beaten the pants off of everybody. I mean, it's just 62 to thirty five was he? So twenty seven point win. Oh, so, so you do like playing this points game. I thought you didn't like playing it, but now it's like I don't like generally you do. like it, but in this case, <laughs> I did play the points game. So I'm like, they have, now they have a common opponent. And I, I thought Columbus already had a better resume. And they beat Cuero 
They beat Needville right. bad. They beat La- Lagrange is three and one also. Like Columbus has three wins over four A teams, all with winning records, and they've beaten them all by thirty points. Like it's crazy what Columbus is doing right now. Right. Credit to them. They're the number one team in three A Division One as of today. We'll see how it goes because Belleville, they're playing a pissed off Belleville team. Right. I did not. I watched most of Belleville and Hitchcock on Thursday night, and I was. Belleville, there's something – there's not clicking. The offensive line's not playing very well. I know Belleville in the season opener lost one of their running backs, uh, Corey and Hood, to an injury. Oh, really? That's it. Okay. That's it. Yeah, he's out for the year. That's it. They still have D.D. Murray, but they don't have that one-two punch. Yeah, the last year they had one-two, three punch. They had one-two yeah, and they, three. They and now they just Hickey, have, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now they just have D.D. Murray, and, and people are keen on D.D. Murray, and Belleville's offensive line is having some struggles. And that was a concern. Their defense was fine. I mean, you hold Hitchcock to twenty-one. That's 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 not bad. The thing is, Columbus just has a lot of balance. They have a lot of different ways they can beat you. And Columbus's offensive line is really good. Now, trying to block DJ Sanders is going to be a problem. It's a problem for any right. team in Texas. Uh, Hitchcock was almost letting DJ Sanders run through, and then they, they would let Lloyd Jones kind of uh, evade him and then run around and make a throw. Right. Uh, and so Hitchcock's not going to be. Columbus isn't going to be able to do that. I think they're going to try to block Sanders a little more traditionally. And I think it'll be tough. But Columbus has so many different ways they can beat you. They got Rigdon. They got Schobel. They got Braylon Fisher. They got the other Schobel kid tied in. They're just loaded. Right. I I think I, I just, I'm concerned about Belleville's offense. I think Columbus gets something. I think it'll be very, I don't think Columbus is going to blow Belleville out. I think this is going to be the first real big test for Columbus. But I like Columbus to win in a close one. And then there's another – Hitchcock's playing as well. They're going up against 4-0 Silsby, and they got to travel over there. Tell me about this one. Uh, Silsby State ranked in 4A Division Two, much like Belleville was. It doesn't bother Hitchcock because they beat a state-ranked 4A yeah. team last week in Belleville. Uh, Silsby, a lot of people kind of – if Silsby over there in the Golden Triangle, the Beaumont area, uh, had, had been great the last couple last couple of years. But they lost, they lost a really loaded senior class led by uh, their five-star wide receiver, Draylon Miller, who's now – yeah. Up there in Boulder with uh, Deion Sanders and Coach Prime and all that circus up there in Boulder. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people kind of thought Silsby would take a step back. There were some publications. We picked them second in district there. I've seen, I saw some predictions had him third or fourth. Oh, wow. But they're four and they're, up. You know, they, yeah, they're showing they things. They've off, they have off to a great start. They, they've got wins over Nederland and Beaumont Westbrook, a lot bigger schools than them. And what's been key talking to Coach Randy Smith over there has been their, their play up front on both sides of the ball. And their quarterback play. The quarterback was young last year. He, he had ups and downs. He's a senior, a lot more comfortable. And even though he doesn't have the star power, they're, they're I think, a more complete team across the board. Hitchcock, the key for Hitchcock is going to be going on the road, not reading your press clippings. You know, is it, er, er, everybody's patting him on the back, telling him how they, they've got it turned around. And they're, they're awesome. Coach Smith's going to have a – Coach Craig Smith's got, got a lot of work cut out for him to just say, hey, we got another ball game. we got a really tough ball game. Right. we got to play – on the road, long road trip, hostile environment. Silsby is a very tough place to play. There's going to be a lot of crazy people at that game. Tough environment. Um, interested to see. I've gone back and forth on this. I, I'll I'll give Hitchcock the edge because Hitchcock's actually playing really good defense this year for the most part. But it, this is a, this is going to be a close game. Silsby's really good, and they're a bigger school. They're a four A Division two also. So Hitchcock's going to bring their A game again this week. And then. They, will they finally get into the district play? I mean, it's tough when you got a what five team district. I think they got. They may one still have one more. Yeah, I think they got six. No, yeah, I think Hitchcock's got one more. I know Columbus has one more non district game next week. We'll see. Who okay, well then Hitchcock does too. Up. It's it's not yeah, envious see. for a coach during the off season when you got to find six non districts. Well, but, actually, Hitchcock Hitchcock's off next week. They uh, they they only have nine games in the schedule. They, they have oh, okay. by week eleven, so Hitchcock's only got nine games this, this year. Wow, the old double buy. All right, well let's let's find out uh, where Matt is stepping out to this week. Talk to me. No, no Houston trip this week, Wizzy. It's gonna be a couple of weeks before I'm back in Houston. Ah, for crying out loud! I am headed. The to, people want to see you. Go ahead. I, I, and I love I love the people of Houston. I, I had a great time uh, the last two weeks uh, in Houston. But I got you know it's a big state, Wizzy. I got I got I got to get out there. So. Uh, I will be spending my entire weekend in the Rio Grande Valley. It's my Rio Grande Valley trip this week. 
Uh, Thursday night, big game in FAR. Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial takes on PSJA North. Uh, big district game there. Uh, Friday night, I will be in Port Isabel, which if you don't know where Port Isabel is, it is as far south. It's, it's as close to the ocean as you can get. It is right next Without to South Without being Pottery in the Island. ocean. But it's, 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 yeah, the, state, the stadium is really le- next to the bridge that goes to South Padre Island. If you, if you live on South Padre Island, you go to Port Isabel. Uh, no. Port Isabel, undefeated, takes on Ed Couch Elsa, who's 3-1. and one. Should be a really good game Friday. Then they got a game Saturday. Uh, far, north, far Southwest is taking on uh, Edinburgh North. Uh, so 5A versus a 6A matchup. So three games in far South Texas. Show the folks in the Rio Grande Valley some love. I'm on a diet, but I'm definitely going to eat some good food while I'm down there as well. Because let me tell you, the, the, the Mexican food down there is as good as anywhere in the world. That's nice to hear, man. And you're bringing back a plate. You bring you back a plate? A, a, I'll bring you back a Beltana platter with a there giant Dr. Pepper. Uh, I don't know about that. Just bring the platter. I'll come up with my own drink, man. I got water all over. What if Dr. Place. Pepper wants to sponsor the podcast? We gotta. Uh, gosh. gotta if that happens, I got I got some issues. I got to figure you out gotta, where, gotta, where my life is going. A, you got to chug one on the air every week. Yeah, every <laughs> show I got to have it in my hand. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I got to scoop down and drink some gutter water. What in go. the world? <laughs> all right, Step. We will talk to you again next week when we talk about week six as we get edge closer to the postseason. Thanks for joining me, my man, and we will talk to you later.